Hey guys, John and Sharice here for another segment of Cupid's Corner. Thank you guys for joining us. This week, we're gonna cover three new topics or tips and tricks for you guys. One is to motivate your partner. Two is to help your partner and don't use reverse psychology on them. Three, TV in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. So let's go over some of these topics and talk about them and get in depth on how they could possibly help your relationship. The first one, motivating your partner or motivating yourself. By motivating yourself, sometimes it helps you motivate your partner, right? They might take the cue or see your example and it might motivate them to do better or to do more things. And that could be in the relationship, that could be in their job, that could be for your family. Motivation is key. So it's, it's really necessary for you to motivate yourself and to motivate your partner. Whatever it may be, is it to help their career or your career? Is it to help the family, right? Because that should be a priority if you do have a family. And if you don't have a family, your fur baby or your partner is your family. So that way you can motivate them. So it could be a lot of different things, right? A lot I mean, of you have to goals. give some examples here. So let's just say your partner is laying in bed yep. and they're like, I don't feel like getting out of bed today. It's been a long week and yep. my boss made me upset. And all I want to do is just lay here and they take the covers and they put it over their face and they're like, <laughs> I don't want to leave. So then, you, you know, what you got to do is you got to go and you got to rip the covers off yep. and then throw them a set of clothes, yep. maybe throw a shoe at them. They can go get the other one. That's fine. But plan something, go somewhere, do something. Be yep. like, hey, let's go. Let's go do something. Let's go to the park. Let's go see a movie. Let's go grab a drink. You know, yep. oh, who cares what it is? Yep. But that's you motivating your partner to get out of bed because they feel some type of way. Yeah. I mean, motivating your partner is a lot of ways. I mean, mm -hmm. trust me. Me and Sharice have owned the business for over eight years, right? We've been in a relationship over 12 as far as married, kids, the whole nine. There are days where she might be feeling down. I'm like, listen, Sharice, we got to get out of bed. We got to go do this. I don't feel like it. I feel down. You, know, you got to get them up. And that's how you motivate them. And it might be you and they might reverse do it for you. They reciprocate that motivation. That brings you guys together and brings you guys stronger. Mm -hmm. They might fight you in the, in the beginning and say, mm -hmm. I don't want to do this or, you know, that's not right or whatever. It is. Listen, you're motivating them. Get through to them. And you know what? If they love you and trust you, they will take that motivation. They'll run with it. It will actually motivate you even more. I, I can't tell you how many times me and Sharice have been like that. You know, when sometimes I'm down, she's my rock and vice versa. So it's a big ups to her. Thank you for doing that no, for me. No, thank you for doing it for me. You know, and I it does it work that. both ways, guys. Remember, so if you realize that your partner is trying to motivate you, yeah. don't keep shutting them down. Yeah. You know, try to try to work with them. You and know, that can be and motivation a lot of different ways. So for sure. So just take that motivation and run with it. It's like starting a fire, man. Start that fire, make it to a big bonfire for you guys. So you have all this energy, all this motivation to get things done. And like 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 she said, there's could be examples like moving into a new house, like you don't want to do it. It's like, come on, we got to do this. Or getting the office straight or working a little bit later or putting in extra work where we need to. <laughs> you got to motivate, okay? So that's one, motivating your partner. Oh, and let me just make sure I insert this because John always loves to say this to me. And at this point, I just like roll my eyes even though it's I know. One. It's a good you one. You know what I'm going to say, right? Absolutely. If it was easy, then everybody would do it. That's right. So when, <laughs> when you are accomplishing a goal, and you don't feel like doing it or you're so frustrated at doing it, you know what? The reason you're frustrated is because it might be a little difficult or might be hard and not everybody can do that. He says it all the time. You know, in the business we're in, it's the exact same thing. You know, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. They look from the outside like, oh, that's easy or I could do that. And then when they get in the trenches or they start doing it themselves, they realize how hard it is. And a lot of people quit at things like that. That's one thing with me and her. It's always motivation. So I'm like, listen, we got to get up. We got to do this. We got to accomplish this goal. You know, and like I said, if everybody could do it, they would. But it might be too hard for them. And then they realize that. And even when you set a goal, right, a goal should be set so it's not easy to accomplish. There's easy goals and there's harder goals. And, you know, it's just like climbing a mountain. You got to work your way up and progress, even when you're training your body, right? You're working, you're progressing, you're putting a load on your body. So it might not be that easy to do, but you work your way up and you grow that strength and you will finally get there. And when you get there, you'll have that feeling of accomplishment and you and your partner can share that feeling, which is awesome, right? All right, so number two. So this is a good one right here. Do not use reverse psychology on your partner, right? Don't get them down. 
don't think that that's going to motivate them. It goes right along with number one. A lot of people do that. Yeah. A lot of people do yeah. do it. They like do. say, for instance, let's just say that they're overweight and yeah. you want to get them to go to the gym, right? Yeah. And you try to get, to get them to go to the gym, but they just yeah. won't go to the gym. Yeah. And they're eating pizza and they won't go to the gym and they keep getting right. weight, but they want to complain about it, right? right? And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I'm just going to use reverse psychology. Yeah. And you say something mean. Yes. And it kind of gets to them and it yes. might motivate them. But it might also hurt their feelings yes. and it, you know, then it could cause a little bit of damage on the relationship, Absolutely. which is not what you want. Absolutely. So you don't want to damage your feelings, right? You want to take their feelings. Now, you know, you got to be truthful now. So it is one thing to be truthful. It's just, you don't have to give them the hard truth or a mean truth, right? Like you're fat, get up off your lazy butt and go do something. I've heard that or, you know, you won't be able to do that no matter what. Mm -hmm. I mean, why are you gonna knock down your partner? That yeah. just makes no sense. And motivating them or having them want to do that with you, reverse psychology is not the way to go. I know some people use it on kids. Yeah, I was gonna say, well, yeah, right? it does work on children. Now, so, yeah, because you know, kids might not all children, be there. Man, I'll tell they, you. you know, they might think, oh, he said I can't do it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, and, I'm gonna do it. You know, and some people do use motivation like that. Like, you know, if somebody told me like I can't do it, that's probably gonna motivate me to want to do it even more right if it's good for me now if it's a bad thing I'm definitely not gonna do it yeah but you know so using reverse psychology is the wrong method to motivate your partner or to have your partner want to accomplish that goal with you like we talked about mm -hmm. the best way is is positive reinforcement even if you're starting slow listen honey let's go for a walk around the block right hey listen oh man that wasn't that bad let's go for a jog around the block mm -hmm. you know let's let's do some push-ups or sit-ups together Let's go in the gym together and just, just start light and go there and work with them. Help them. It will help your relationship. You guys will build more of a bond, mm -hmm. more of a trust, and they will want to do it with you. So that positive reinforcement is really the key to having them and motivating them to want to do better. I agree. I, I'm right there with it. So, you know, even with my son or with Sharice, you know, with my son, I try to use it here or there. I mean, even your dad. Yeah, you know, my dad is another <laughs> one, geez. But, you know, with, with Cherise, it, it's, it's positive reinforcement. Like, listen, honey, we're going to be able to do this. And she might be frustrated or down or upset about what's going on. I just get frustrated usually. <laughs> and at that point, listen, you don't want to push those frustrating vibes out there because that might frustrate your partner too as well. Or it might frustrate the people that are around you. Mm -hmm. So positive reinforcement, okay? So remember that. No bad Juju, positive <laughs> reinforcement, Ju -ju. no reverse psychology on them, right? You're not a psychologist, don't use it against them. It could hurt their feelings and they could hold on to those feelings or those words. Yeah. Some people say, you know, like, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones and words will never hurt me. Lies. All right, so listen, people really hold on to some of those words. So at that point, listen, just be in tune to what you're saying to your partner. Try to help them with positive reinforcement, okay? So that's number two. Number three. My favorite. And now people might not agree with this one, but this one's a good one. <laughs> Put a TV in your bedroom. All right? A lot of people do not have TVs in their bedroom. I don't know like, why that is. Well, you know, they, they, they have people out there in studies, like, you know, the TV might keep you up or you might get distractions or yes. whatever it may be. So it's there for So you might sleep peacefully without a TV in there because some people sleep with the TV on. All right? I take it. And uh, at that point, like, you know, the TV, right, you guys could be watching something that could spur a conversation. Mm -hmm. A, that you've never talked about. Mm -hmm. Two things you might want to talk about. You might just get too busy through your day and forget about it. Yeah. And that might just spur it in your mind. You might think about it again. Like, like oh my goodness, I oh my to God. tell you this. Right, and we do it all the time because we get so busy at work. <laughs> yeah. You know, at, at home, that's kind of like our downtime when we get home and it might be 10, 11 o'clock at night. We throw on the news or we throw on a TV show or whatever it is just to kind of decompress because mm -hmm. it does let you decompress. You know, on our movie night, which is Thursdays, we always go see a movie. And that movie's great. And the reason why is because you can't talk in the movies. You're not supposed to be answering your phone. Yeah, it's silent. It's dark. You guys can just zone in on whatever it is and really not think about things. And that's, that's kind of where it's at. Not having to think about things too serious and being able to talk to your partner. You guys can cuddle in bed. You know, I mean, you know, put your arm around your wife. Like I do, Sharice, she's hands right my there. Little, this is my little nook. Yeah, so, and then you know, I go in it's here. just like this, you like know. That. It actually makes me fall asleep or it calms me down too. It relaxes me. <laughs> 
So, True statement. You know, it, Twelve years. It really does. You know, it, it, it does. It puts me into a zone where I kind of still want to go to sleep at that point. <laughs> so these things will help you guys, right? And it will help. Like I said, it can spur a number of different things. And there's got to be something. I know a lot of people say like, I don't watch TV or I don't have a TV. You know, I understand that. You know, you might be so busy that you might not be watching TV. But I'm telling you, you know, pull your computer out. You know, just watch something together that you guys both might like. And it could be a documentary where you're learning something, mm -hmm. right? Or it could be just, you know, a goofy movie that you guys can watch. It could be an adult at. session. We do that yeah. all, all the time on the weekends. You like know, and just watch a whole entire series on Netflix and yeah. stay there for like eight hours. Yeah, so I mean, it's good. I mean, you guys can watch, like I said, movies, television shows, talk shows, news. Whatever floats your boat, you guys can both enjoy together. And remember, there is a remote to the TV. Yeah. So that means you can turn it off. Yeah, you can put a timer on. Yeah. So at that point, listen, if you think it's a sleep issue, you can put the timer on for 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be on just because it's in there. It, do, it doesn't have to be on, but See? you know, and that's a good thing. Like, that should be like your guy's sacred place is your bed. Your bed is, should be your sacred place as a relationship. You know, so that means everything. So you guys laying together and just relaxing there would be awesome. And I'm telling you, it works for us, and it works for a lot of different couples out there, especially the ones we tell about this tip or trick. You know, they always come back like, oh, you know, it was really cool. You know, I got to share some different things with my wife or my husband that maybe I wouldn't right. or forgot about or whatever it may be. So that's really, really cool. So put the TV in the bedroom, right? Not just downstairs or in your living room, especially if you got kids. I know, then they're always on it. Right, right. And now you don't get to watch what you want to watch, even if you wanted to watch 30 minutes of the news. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you can have them go downstairs. You know, at that point in time, you guys can have a little alone time. The kids are downstairs doing their thing. Some term the you TV. know, where they're playing a video, <laughs> where they're playing a video game, <laughs> or whatever it is. And you guys can have some alone time together, even if it's in your house or your own home. It's kind of like a little vacay. You and her are just off by yourselves, and you guys are watching something. It could be, you know. It could be like watching something about Hawaii and you guys are actually kind of there or feeling it because you guys are talking about like, or it could spur like, hey, listen, I want to go on a trip. This would be an awesome place to or go. Or it can even be like, hey, listen, oh my God, did you do this as a kid? Yes. There's another conversation. Yes. You know, and that's that's a whole nother topics that we're going to get on to next week. Yeah. Um, talk about learning about your partner, you know, their history and yep. where the future might take you guys. So I want you guys to stay tuned because next week, 11 a.m., ABC, the Tight Medical Health and Lifestyle Show. There's always going to be a Cupid's Corner segment. We love bringing you guys these topics, these tips, these tricks that have helped me and Sharice um, gather a better love for each other, a stronger relationship in the bedroom, outside the bedroom, physically and mentally. Yes, I totally agree, and I can't wait to see you guys there. So we'll see you guys next Sunday, 11 a.m., ABC, the Tight Medical Health and Lifestyle Show. We appreciate all the support. We will see you next week. See ya.